Welcome to the CBS Radio Mystery Theater Archives, the only YouTube channel which has the original classic episodes of the CBS Radio Mystery Theater in order with no ads. Thank you for listening, and now, enjoy the show. identical years that William Shakespeare was writing plays in his native England, plays that were to become one of the richest treasures of Western civilization, another European was creating his masterpiece. The man was a Spaniard, Miguel de Cervantes. His work, The Adventures of Don Quixote, a 400-year-old story of a curious combination of two men whose lives were to become dramatically and inextricably entangled. What are you up to, my lord? Stand your ground, you cowardly knaves! You dastardly giants! Careful, master! They're not giants, they're windmills! Quiet, Sancho. <laughs> I may be only a single knight alone, you miserable, overgrown, faint-hearted monsters! Stay where you are! The windmills are turning! You can get killed! <laughs> mystery drama, The Adventures of Don Quixote, was especially adapted from the Cervantes classic by Arnold Moss, and stars Arnold Moss and Larry Haynes. It is sponsored in part by ARM, Allergy Relief Medicine, and True Value Hardware Stores. I'll be back shortly with Act One. One of the most blessed gifts a man can have is his imagination. The power to dream, to conceive, to create, and finally with persistence, to turn dreams into reality. But men of vision, men with more insight than the rest of us, are often scorned and derided for what would seem to be their impractical, even mad ideas, which is the story of Cervantes Don Quixote de la Mancha. We retell some of his adventures through the perceptive eyes of his faithful follower, the short, hot-bellied, simple, no-nonsense Sancho Panza. Many years ago, in the province of La Mancha, lived a man known as Don Quixote. He was about 50 years old, tall, rangy, long-legged, lean-waisted, and brown as a walnut from the golden sun of our beautiful Spain. When he had nothing better to do, which was most of the time, Don Quixote would pore over thick volumes of old books, books of long ago, and especially those books that had to do with knights and challenges, battles and tournaments, chivalry and wicked magicians. It is long past time, good lord, my uncle, for you to get some sleep. Uh, no, not until I finish this book, my good niece, says Meralda. I'm almost through. The cocks are crowing. The stub of candle is sputtering with the coming light of day. Uh, just, 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 just let me read you this. Listen. With one last mighty effort, Don Alejandro de Salamanca, covered with his shield, raised his mighty lance, dug spurs into the sweating flanks of his noble steed, and galloped fiercely toward the enemy. It is so late. The wicked sorcerer, eyes all ablaze, met him full on, but was no match for the gallant knight. Are you listening, girl? Oh, I am so sleepy. I must get to bed, and so must you. You listen. I listen. The brave knight's lance found an opening in the enchanted armor of the evil sorcerer, who immediately fell to the ground, dead. Whereupon, Don Alejandro raced to the castle, rescued the beautiful princess from her dark dungeon prison, and rode off with her to... To where, my lord? It doesn't say... The last page of the book is missing. Oh. oh, what a pity. Now will you stop thinking about this nonsense and go to sleep, my uncle. Please. The most fantastic... 
fantastical tales began to seem very real to Don Quixote. He began to think that if he rode off with lance and shield, he might fare as gloriously as those same knights over whose stories he had spent so many unending hours. And here, in this hidden, dusty closet here in the stable, a suit of armor that must have once belonged to some forgotten ancestor of mine. The metal plates are bent and twisted, my good lord. Oh, what matter, Esmeralda? What grieves me most is that there is no headpiece. Well, I could fashion a helmet for you out of something, I suppose, but... But why on oh, earth should you... Oh, splendid, Esmeralda, splendid. Next, I must be provided with a beautiful, noble steed. Come, my girl, we must see what we have. There's nothing there, my lord. Only that sway back, jaded old stallion who can hardly stand, let alone walk. Ah, here he is. <laughs> what a handsome beast, fit for the most glorious of adventures. You can count every one of his ribs. He's so starved, so skinny, so so wasted away. He shall be my steed. He's ready for nothing better than the glue factory, my uncle. I shall call him Rosinante, which signifies the best of all horses. <laughs> and I, I shall henceforth be known as... Don Quixote, man of La Mancha. But I have heard that neither horse nor name nor armor is so necessary to a knight errant as a beautiful lady to love, and in whose name and for whose honor he can pursue his daring adventures. Uh, alas, I know no such lady. Uh, it's just as well. No, wait, wait, wait. Hmm? Let me see. Ah, yes. Long ago in the little village of Toboso, there was a country girl. I, uh, made eyes at her once. You? Yeah, but she never so much as even glanced my way. Oh, heaven be praised. What was her name? I don't remember. So I shall choose a new name for her. A new name? I shall choose a name for her that will go down in the annals of history. She shall be known as Dulcinea del Toboso. And in her name, I shall become known for my deeds of honor and glory. But there was one small hitch in Don Quixote's grandiose plans. He had not yet been knighted. In the great heat of a day in July, cased in his plates of iron, Don Quixote mounted Rocinante, who grudgingly tottered at his own dragging pace into the fields. And by late evening, the Don arrived at a large inn, which he joyously took to be a castle. My good steed. Now listen, listen, Rosinante, to that blast of trumpets that welcomes us to this fine castle. Oh, it is no blast of trumpets, sir. Ah, sir keeper of the castle, what joy to see you. Well, that is the swineherd blowing his horn to call his pigs back into their sty. And I'm the innkeeper of this humble establishment. You wish a bed for the night? I would not cause you any inconvenience, my lord, but nothing is too good for my horse. If here, within your castle walls... Oh, man's house may indeed, as they say, be his castle, but I insist I that... One moment. I remember from my reading that an honorable man may request knighthood at the hands of the first knight he meets... Sir Keeper of the Castle, may I presume on your good nature to do me that great honor? I'm no more than the landlord of this inn. I know you say that, so no evil sorcerer may hear and take advantage of you. Of course, of course. Well, then, suppose uh, you must kneel. Uh, let me help you. Now, say the words. Certainly. Ebony, ebony, bibbity, ebony, Sam. Ebony, bibbity, canal boat. Dictionary down the ferry. Fun, fun, sword and gun. 1491. Now rise, sunlight. Whatever your name is, rise. 
Not too easy getting up with all this arm. Yes, yeah, so I see. Uh, uh, now, show, show me to my quarters. Uh, have you any money? Money? For what purpose? Should a knight carry anything so base as money about him? Uh, perhaps not. I have nothing about me so commonplace as money. Show me to my quarters. No please. money, eh? Your quarters may not be all that comfortable. Follow me. For me, my only comfort is in arms, my bed, a battlefield. Well, in that case, you won't mind, I'm sure, sharing your sleeping quarters here with these pigs. As a keeper of the castle, you have knighted me. I am indebted to you. Friends. The next morning, giving Rocinante his head, the good Don started out again into the world. Instead, in almost no time at all, they were back once more at Don Quixote's home. It was then that he recruited me as his squire to ride behind him to serve his worldly needs. And Sancho Panza, for your loyalty, your untiring devotion to me, I promise you... Yes, my lord? No less than the governorship of an island. Which island? Well, the first one that comes to hand. A governor? <laughs> How wonderful! Governor... Of my own island. Shortly thereafter, one dark and windy night, we clattered and clanked out of town. Don Quixote and Rocinante, and I sitting like a patriarch on my little gray donkey, Dapple. At the first glimmer of daylight, having wandered wherever Rocinante's fancy had happened to take us, I jogged Don Quixote's elbow and said, Do you see any islands through all this mist and fog? Huh? Hmm? Islands? Oh, quiet, quiet, Sancho. Our fortune is better than any island we could have wished for. Look. Look where, my lord? We'll get enormous booty when I overthrow those huge giants that loom up ahead of us. Booty we can give to the poor. Giants, I have read, are often fantastically wealthy. I, what giants do you talk about, my lord? There, in the distance, where I'm pointing. Do you see how they thrice at us with their fearfully long arms? Long arms? They wish to bar our path. They want us not to pass. I have read that giants can reach out and catch people who are as much as two leagues away. Well, in, in, in that case, we are much too close. I shrink into my saddle and make myself as small as possible. Well, that way, maybe they won't see me. You do the same. No, no, let them see us. They will prove no match for me. My lord, I think I must tell you, those things you're pointing out that you call giants... Are no more than windmills. Windmills? They can't do us any harm. Windmills, indeed. <laughs> oh, my simple Sancho, that shows how very little you know about giants. Windmills. But in time you'll learn, poor innocent soul, you'll learn. Oh, 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 oh Rosinante, whoa! To me, to my poor ignorant eyes, I could have sworn they were windmills. If you are afraid, say your prayers. I'll meet them all alone. You stay here, Sancho. What are you up to, my lord? Stand your ground, you cowardly knaves! You dastardly giant! Yeah, careful, master! Be quiet, Sancho. I may be only a single knight alone, you miserable, overgrown, faint-hearted monster. You can get hurt! But like David facing half a dozen Goliaths, I engage you all in unequal but mortal combat. Don Quixote, the wind has freshened. The sails, the arms of the windmills are turning faster and faster. Giants, prepare to do me battle. Like David, it is your death or mine. The lunatic, the lover, and the poet are of imagination all compact. And in the night, imagining some fear, how easy is a bush supposed a bear? Cervantes' contemporary Shakespeare on imagination. 
Don Quixote may be the ideal combination of all three. Lunatic? Who is to say? Lover? In his own way. Poet? Depends on your definition. And of course, his sally against the windmills takes us into act two. I shall return shortly. There are those who say that the age of chivalry is dead and gone. That the spirit of romance and bold adventure is a thing of the long forgotten past. There are others who say that chivalry will never be gone so long as there is one wrong left on earth that needs to be righted. And one man left on earth who will try to remedy that wrong. Like Don Quixote, ready to fight even windmills. In the name of my fair lady, Dulcinea del Toboso, I challenge all of you. It is your death or mine. Rosinante, to the field. They're not giants, my lord. Move, Rosinante, move. Please, dear horse, go. Oh, faster, Rosinante, faster. If it's the last charge you ever make. Come on, you evil giant. Stand as a man. My stout lance will pierce you through and through. So, so, and so. <laughs> no, my lance is shattered and splintered into bits. Are you hurt, master? Oh, where am I? That giant tossed me up into the sky. Are you all right, my lord? You have a huge lump on your head. Uh, shaken. All right. The fortunes of war, dear Sancho, to coin a phrase. This was a perfectly natural mistake. Let me help you back onto your horse. Yes. Easy, does it? Up we go. Oh, my back. Oh, thank you, thank you, my good man. You know, we'll have to find me another lance. Well, here. here. Here's the long pointed branch of an oak tree. Mm -hmm. You can use that for a lance for the time being. Yes. And I shall also need another helmet. This one I had is ruined, split in two, beyond all use. And may I first suggest, my lord, that it's dinner time. Uh, we must not forget to eat something and drink something, too. I don't think I have any appetite. But then you wouldn't mind, I hope, if, if I... If, I... if... You ate something? No, help yourself, Sancho. Until I find a new helmet, I shall neither eat nor drink nor sleep in any bed made by the smoothing hands of a woman, I swear. You swear? Oh, what a horrible oath. And so I ate my dinner alone. Darkness soon overtook us. We made our beds on the hard ground among some dried leaves. There was a waterfall nearby. I was awakened by the sun beaming into my face and the voice of Don Quixote whispering loudly, hoarsely into my ear. Sancho, Sancho, wake up. Sancho Panza, it's morning. What? Uh, so, so? We have spent the night next to a miserable torture chamber. And a uh, torture chamber? Listen. You hear those chains and those outrageous noises? Those are the servants of the devil himself flogging the innocent backs of some poor souls in agony. I hear no voices. Flogging them with chains. I shall set them free. Wait. One moment, my good master. I am the man for whom heaven reserves its most dangerous adventures. Am I not? <laughs> Outrageous noises on my soul. Dangerous adventures. Oh, 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 oh my side. What are you <laughs> laughing at? <laughs> there, under the waterfall. Nothing but a harmless water mill and six trip hammers. Oh. That cranking chain harnesses the machinery to the mill wheel. Hmm. <laughs> oh, how it deceived you. <laughs> a knight is not supposed to have any great knowledge of things mechanical. Indeed. First windmills, now a water mill. Anyone could make such a mistake. Of course. Hey. Your worship. Well, what is it? Uh, there. Listening in the sun, not ten feet from us. What? 
a brass basin, the kind that barbers use when they shave their clients. Oh, well, let me see. Oh, so it is. Yeah, with the little half circle cut out of it to fit the neck of the person being shaved. What are you grinning at? <laughs> it's a little battered, a little worse for wear, but turn it upside down and you have a helmet. A most admirable helmet. Oh, Sancho, you are a genius. Put it on your head. Uh-huh. How do I look? Beautiful, my lord. Perfect. And it's the correct size, too. Good. Now you can join me in breakfast. <laughs> that day, we came upon a dozen men in a chain gang, trudging along. Like beads on a string, they were linked by their necks by a heavy chain of iron. An armed horseman, a captain in the king's army, led them on. We stopped and watched as they passed by us. Why, Sancho, are those men being so badly treated? They have broken the law, I suppose. And are being taken away to serve as galley slaves, chained to the oars of the king's ship. Gentlemen, may I be of service to you? What are you staring at? Uh, these miserable men you lead along the road. Are lawbreakers, all of them. Indeed. Well, take this one. He fell so desperately in love with someone else's linen that he embraced it and ran. He was lashed and sentenced to three years of rowing in the king's navy. And the one behind him, Captain? That one, the graybeard. He's a debtor. Owed someone five ducats. Couldn't pay. Five ducats, five years. And so it goes with all of them. But, good sir, these men, such harsh punishment for such small crimes. Easy, master, easy. You, you stay in line. You struck that old man with your horsewhip. Well, how else would you make him obey? But these are not animals. These are men. If you must whip someone, you try to whip me if you can. Not these helpless, starving men. I am a knight errant. Yeah, what's what you say? I ask the pledge to help the miserable and the abused. Best to go about your business, sir. Don't meddle with soldiers like me. I represent the king. A rat who plays with cats can get himself scratched. You are a cat and a rat and a coward all in one. Have at you. Put down that silly stick I want you. There's no stick. It is a deadly lance pointed at your coward's heart. Come no nearer. I shoot. In the name of Dulcinea del Toboso. Now stay. Stay where you have fallen. He has no choice. When he fell off his horse, his head hit a rock. I think he's unconscious. Quickly find the key to the prisoner's chain. It must be on his belt. Uh, yes, master. You prisoners, all of you, you brothers in iron, guilty though you may be, you are sentenced beyond the weight of your crimes. You have not been given justice. And I, Don Quixote de la Mancha, do here acquit you. Consider yourselves free men. The manacles are all unlocked, sire. They are free. And this could mean big trouble for both of us. We had better get out of here and hide, but fast. We have rescued the prisoners of the king, which is crack-brained rebellion. You may be right. Away, Sancho. To the mountains. <laughs> dark wooded slope of the Sierra Morena, Don Quixote led the way uh, on foot to take the strain off Rosinante. In the saddle of my donkey, Dapple, I nodded drowsily, fearing every moment I might fall completely asleep and go over a steep cliff. When morning came... You, uh, you know something, Sancho? What? I must write the Lady Dulcinea a letter. At a time like this? And tell her how extraordinarily mad I am for love of her. I shall do this now. A page out of my notebook. So? Here, here, here. Take it. Yeah. This fallen hawk's feather for a pen. 
I squeezed juice out of these berries for ink. And now, Sancho, write the words I say. Hi, and sovereign lady, your beauty has stabbed me to the heart. Long absence from your loveliness. Sancho, why are you not writing? You must forgive me, master. That is not one of my accomplishments. I don't know how to write. Oh, I see. Well, then give me the paper, pen, and ink. Long absence from your loveliness has clouded my brain. I am mad for love of you. Say that you love me. Bid me hope. Tell my my trusty squire to hasten back with your kind message. I will be with you soon. Sweetest of sweets, I am yours till death. Don Quixote de la Mancha. By breakfast, dinner, and supper, I have never heard a final letter in all my born days. And that phrase, my trusty squire. <laughs> How eloquent. Yes. Well, now, get the horse, or rather, donkey, take the letter, go to Toboso, and return as fast as Dappled's legs will take you. Hey, just one moment, sire. I think someone is coming up the mountain path. Where? Just below us. Someone with a familiar look. Maybe we should try to disappear. Run away? I? Are you mad, Sancho? Who is it that approaches us? Someone searching for the greatest rogue unhung. And who are you? I, the captain of the king, who is guarding the chain of the king's prisoners, the ones that you set free. I have a warrant for your arrest. Run, master, run. I'll take care of him. Don't move. Neither of you. Don Quixote de la Mancha, or whatever your name might be. I arrest you in the name of his imperial majesty, the king of Spain. But I can tell you, you bold revolutionist, that for what you've done, you'll be sent to the galleys for life. Surely, sir, you must have the wrong man. This frail gentleman, sir. Frail gentleman, indeed. My orders also read... Apprehend to the rebel's accomplice, who happens to be the stupidest fellow alive. Oh, clearly a case of mistaken identity, Captain. You couldn't possibly be me. Uh, or could you now both of you march down this mountain path to the village quickly? And it should interest you both to know that once we get there, there's an ox cart waiting for you. They're building a cage on it. To take me to prison? First, to take you back to your home as a madman. Strange world, this. Where a man who dares what seems impossible to most men is called mad. We're ready, Captain. <laughs> As they started on their way, Sancho saw Don Quixote's letter to Dulcinea slowly flutter to the ground. He took one look at his thin, frail master and decided it was best to let the letter go. So Don Quixote, astride Rosinante, clip-clopped his measured way down the mountain path. Sancho Panza and his donkey, Dapple, followed closely. And the king's soldier, pistol drawn, drew up the rear. I'll be back in a moment with Act Three. After a wearisome journey of six long days, the cage and the ox cart carrying Don Quixote and Sancho Panza finally arrived at their own village. The townspeople, delighted to see them once again, ran the king's soldier out of the village, unlocked the cage, and set Don Quixote and Sancho free. Sancho returned temporarily to Teresa, his wife. While the worn Quixote was confined to bed by his housekeeper niece, Esmeralda. After a few days, Sancho came calling once again upon his master. Esmeralda greeted him with, Coward fool! Why do you keep coming back here? And why do you keep calling me those names? I am a very bold, faithful, and courageous squire. To let my poor uncle expose himself to all this silliness. You're just as bad as he is. Have you ever tried to stop your uncle from doing anything once he's made up his mind? And you, 
to leave your wife and children while you go off gallivanting with my uncle. Oh, I did. Did you Let's bring do. any shoes for your children? Those poor little darlings to walk barefoot while you ride to the ends of the earth? No, I did not. But all the same... Did you bring your he... wife, Teresa, so much as a string to lace up those rags she wears? Well, there was no opportunity. I was so busy that... Busy, I... indeed. Things will be different once I get my island. What island? The one I'm going to be governor of. The one that Don Quixote promised me. Oh, you're even a bigger fool than I thought. Esmeralda, please. I've come to see the good knight. How is he? Oh, better. You sure? He was looking rather poorly last time I saw him. Well, he's, he's improving. Take that, you varlet, and that. Lunge, parry, thrust. Ah, to the heart. Like I said, he's better. What's he doing? He's fencing. Uh, practicing sword thrust. Alone? Alone. But he has no sword. That's very true. Uh, oh. oh, there you are, my good man. So, you've come to see me at last. I've come to see you every blessed day, but this niece of yours, this dragon, she wouldn't let me in. Dragon, is it? I'll give you dragon. Quiet, girl, and leave the room. Please, I have rather serious matters to discuss with my good squire. I can just imagine how serious. Uh, is she gone? Quite. Sancho Panza, the time has come. It has? What time is that? For us to undertake the journey to Toboso. Toboso? We must at long last find our way to the Lady Dulcinea to tell her what we've been doing in her name. It's been a long time since you saw her? Sancho, I may fairly say it's been an eternity since I saw her. Oh, that is indeed a long time. I will tell you something I've never told anyone. I have hardly ever seen her at all. I don't even know the way to our home. Well, then how how how, how do you... I, 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 I saw my fair one once in church long, long ago. Ah, yes. Her beauty has left its scars upon me. Honorable wounds, my lord. Fine ladies love them. That may be true. Tomorrow morning at the crack of dawn... We leave. The first night out, we came to the same inn where some time back the innkeeper had conferred knighthood upon Quixote. This time he was given a room to sleep in and a bed. In the morning, in the courtyard, as we were preparing to leave... Did you sleep well, sir? Oh, most miserably, my lord keeper of the castle. This place is infested with devils. Is that so? Oh, their howling and squealing kept me awake the whole night through. Those are my swine. Porkers, pigs, hogs. Enchanted into those familiar shapes by some evil magician. Oh. Make us think they're something they are not. Sancho, uh, yes, my lord. I am anxious to leave. Prepare our steeds. Sir Castlekeeper, the favors I and my good squire have received within your walls are great and extraordinary. So is my bill. Here it is. And I'll tell you something. This is no castle. It's a respectable inn in which the guests pay. We thank you for your courtesy and generosity. Sancho, we leave immediately. Not without paying your bill. Not one single penny. No, not a cent. Knights do not pay bills. You should know that. Oh, wait. I, I have an idea. Let's toss for it. To see, sir, if I pay you, you pay me. Do you agree? I do. So be it. Uh, Pablo, yeah. Jose, Ricardo, come. Bring a blanket. A blanket? He's calling some of his devils. Ah, we'll see. My good man, this gallant gentleman has agreed to toss for his bill, and toss he shall. Hold oh, the bell, wait it, my friend. What are you doing to me? Let it go. You gave your word. 
Hold the corners tight, boys. And up he goes. And down. And down. And down. Up to the all of you. And now, that's, that's enough, men. Let's refresh ourselves with a cup of good red wine. Where, where, where am I? And who are you? Who is Sancho Panza? Your faithful squire. Oh, yes, 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 of course. My, my head's still spinning and my, my bones ache so. Sancho, I was right all along. They were devils, all of them. And you know something? What? I will never toss for a bill again. Never. <laughs> Finally stumbled into Toboso. Donkeys were braying, dogs barking in the streets. I went to every tavern in town, to the church, to each little shop, asking for the Lady Dulcinea's address. At the end of the day, I said to my master, My lord, not a soul in this town has ever heard of Dulcinea. Not one. Oh, they, they don't remember. Long before I thought to rename her Dulcinea, she was called, I believe, Aldonza, Aldonza Lorenzo. Well, why didn't she say so? Well, no one remembers because she has risen to such high estate. She has? But her beauty is undimmed, her loveliness, her shyness, her ladylike manners, all, all unchanged. Mm, I shall try to find her. Aldonza Lorenzo. The next morning, in our search for the Lady Dulcinea, we wandered into a tumble-down section of the village. Dirty, scatterings of shacks and squatters huts. Such a look. Dulcinea graciously comes on tiptoe to meet us. Here, yeah, but... That woman approaching us, that cannot be Dulcinea. Why not? Well, that's a big strapping middle-aged woman who must weigh over 200 pounds. Shh, not another word, it's she. Oh, peerless beauty. Yeah. Here on my knees, I ask you to accept the homage of this poor, humble knight. Who oh, the devil you think you are, you idiot, blocking the road like this? I am Don Quixote de la Mancha, your faithful servant. Oh, out of my way, you dithering jackass. I have work to do. Work? You? I have to go to the woods after my old father's pigs, slaughter some of them, and then salt the meat down for pork. Let me pass, you fool. Do I knock you down? After her, Sancho, Dulcinea has been bewitched. Some evil magician has changed her beauty to ugliness. You think so? Let's follow her into the woods. Whatever spell has been woven over her, we must try to break. I wouldn't expect miracles, my lord, especially so early in the morning. Uh, besides, you seem tired. Uh, you may be right. It might be wiser to wait a bit. Uh, uh, what, 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 huh? Where are all those people coming from? And where are they running to? Oh, it's amazing. They're running around corners, jumping into open windows, huddling in doorways. As if they were expecting a hurricane. Look! A troop of horsemen. They're headed this way. Stand firm, Sancho. Don't give an inch. We shall hold this narrow street against the charge of this whole army of invaders. Make way for the bulls. The bulls are on their way. Bulls? What bulls? The ones the horsemen are bringing from the country for the bullring in Barcelona. The best animals in all of Spain. They follow the horsemen. Get out of the way, sir. The bulls will toss you up into the house top. Run! Run for your life! Uh, 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 coming right at you, a big black shiny bull. He seems to be snorting flames out of his nostrils. He has met his match. You can get killed, master. Stay on your horse. And now, in the name of Dulcinea, I plant my lance with one great lunge into the hump shoulder of his sleek back. <laughs> What happened? I told you this was really dangerous. The bull knocked you off your horse. 
Master, speak to me. Oh, imagine pretending to be bulls. Master, you don't look well. We must really head for home. Sancho, suddenly, I am tired. Very tired. And the pains in my body, they, they, they grow worse. Back to La Mancha. <laughs> castles, no comely maids to be rescued, no prisoners to set free. At last we were home. With Esmeralda's help, I got Don Quixote into his bed. What happened? What went wrong this time? Why is he so pale and silent? He's very ill, Esmeralda, oh. with a high fever. Hey, bring the candle nearer. Yeah. I heard the boys in the street shouting, Here comes the madman. I know. His eyes are opening. Oh. He, he was not mad. He was no more than a man who dared. Dared, my uncle? Don't uh, try to speak, my master. Rest. It will be easy. An ancient Spaniard said it. It's not because things are difficult that we... Do not dare to attempt them. They, they are difficult because we do not dare to do so. I, I dreamed. I dare, dare. Quickly, Edward, the cloth with the cool water on his forehead. Oh, he's dying. Yes, I know. Oh, master. In your life, you tried to conquer so many enemies, even those that were not there. Beat this last one, this shadowy figure of death, if you can. Please. He, he's trying to say something. His, his lips are moving. Yes, Pastor. Uh, we listen. What is it? Anyone can take life from a man, but no one, no one can take death. A thousand gates stand open to us. I enter in the name of the fairest lady in all of Spain, Dulcinea del Toboso. Practical, romantic, extravagantly chivalrous dreamer of a hero has been with us for over 400 years. As long as there is a printed word to be read, it will probably remain as popular as it has always been. Like the plays of his contemporary Shakespeare, Cervantes' story of Don Quixote was a top bestseller in its own day. And like a bestseller or two in our own times, it took Cervantes years before he could find anyone to publish his work. Our cast included Arnold Moss, Larry Haynes, Bryna Rayburn, and Cork Benson. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. Radio Mystery Theater was sponsored in part by Buick Motor Division. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams. Thank you.